Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everybody. It's me Dr. Noor Asniza Isha aka Dr. Ija. Together we are in PMC 500 for the course of statistical reasoning in education. So basically what we are going to learn today is regarding checking the normality test. So you may want to know what is or how can we do the process of checking the normality. So again, I am Dr. Noor Asniza Isha. Right, for this course or for this particular lecture, the objective that you should achieve by the end of the lecture would be you should be able to explain how to check normality using numerically and secondly how to explain uh, and how to check normality tests using graphically. Right, so what is actually a normality test? You may want to ask me, what is normality test? In statistics, normality tests are used to determine if a data set is well modeled by a normal distribution and to compute how likely it is for a random variable underlying the data set to be normally distributed. So in a simple words, when you want to run a statistics or when you want to run a normality test using uh, statistics, the data that you collected should be in a normal distribution or it should be normally distributed. And the sample that you choose for your data should be randomly selected. An assessment of the normality of data is a prerequisite for many statistical tests because normal data is an underlying assumption in parametric testing. So if you want to run a parametric data analysis, Using inferential statistics, number one that you need to do would be you need to find the normality of your data. So, of course, the first assumptions that you need to fulfill for inferential statistics would be the data or the sample that you should that you choose should be randomly selected. And number two would be the data that you collected should be normally distributed. And if these assumptions are fulfilled, meaning that you can run the parametric data analysis using the SPSS. So there are two ways on how you can find the normality using SPSS or in a descriptive statistic. First one would be you can find the normality test using numerically and second one you can find the normality using graph or graphically. So let's look at the first uh, type of finding normality test using numerically. So when you want to find the normality of your data uh, using numerically, there are four ways of finding it. First, you can use Kolmogorov Smirnov. Secondly, you can use Shapiro Will. Thirdly, you can use Kunis. And finally, or the fourth one, you can use Ketosis. So what is or what are the four numerical test that you can use to find the normality of your data. So let's look at the first one, which is Kolmogorov Smirnov. So this is a person name. So whenever you want to write Kolmogorov Smirnov, the K and the S should be in capital letter. So when you want to find the normality test using Kolmogorov Smirnov, it is suitable when the total number of your sample is more than 50 samples. So the function of Kolmogorov Smirnov is to assess the normality of the distribution scores and a non-significant result should be gained where the significant value should be more than 0 0.05. So if your significant value is more than 0 0.05, it indicates that your data is normally distributed. Secondly, you can use Shapiro wheel. What is Shapiro wheel? It's also another numerical test that can use to find the normal uh, the normality of your data but usually it is used when the data is less than 50 samples or the data involved less than 50 samples but the way you interpret the data is the same as Kolmogorov Smirnov where the p value should be more than 0 0.05 where it indicates that your data is normally distributed so for both Kolmogorov Smirnov and Shapiro will when you run the analysis you should get the p-value more than 0 0.05, which indicate that your data is normally distributed. And thirdly, you can use QNIS. 
So skewness will give you information about the distribution of scores for the two groups. And as well as ketosis is also giving information about the distribution of scores for the two groups. So what is skewness and what is ketosis? So the skewness value provides an indication of the symmetry of the distribution. Whereas ketosis, on the other hand, provide information about the peakedness of the distribution. Yeah, so it's about, it's about the symmetry of the distribution as well as the peakedness of the distribution. If the dis distribution is perfectly normal, you would obtain a skewness and ketosis value of zero. And it seldom occurs, particularly in social sciences. So positive skewness values suggest that scores are clustered to the left at the low values and the negative skewness value indicate a clustering of scores at the high end or right hand side of a graph. So if you have a normal distribu distribution curve or a bell shaped curve, if it is skewed uh, to the left, it means that it is positive skewness. And if it's skewed to the right, it means that it is negative skewness. Yeah. So positive ketosis uh, values indicate that the distribution is rather peak, the peak, yeah, peakness, clustered in the center with long thin tails, so it's peak up, yeah, with long thin tails, whereas ketosis value below zero indicate a dis distribution that is relatively flat. So we have the peakedness with the long tails, and if it's zero, it is relatively flat. Too many cases in extreme. With reasonably large sample, Skewness will not make a substantive difference in the analysis. Yeah, this is according to Tabachnik and Fidel. And ketosis can result in an underestimate of the variant, but the risk is also reduced with a large sample. So that is why when you want to run an analysis, you should have a particularly large number of samples. Yeah. So as suggested by Tabachnik and Fidel, you should have more than two hundred cases in order to conclude that your data is normally distributed by using skewness and also ketosis. So this is how you can find the normality using SPSS. So you open your SPSS and at the menu bar, you can choose analyze. And after that, you click descriptive statistics. And after you click descriptive statistics, secondly, you can choose explore. Yeah. And after you choose explore, you will see this window where you need to key in or you need to insert all the variables of your um, or of your research into the dependent list as well as the factor factor list so dependent list is the dependent variable whereas factor list is the independent variable so after you have inserted the variables you can click on plots and what will pop up is that the explore or plots window, uh, not window, uh, just uh, um, uh, a part where you need to click on the normality plot with test. So you need to choose normality plot with test and then you click continue. So when you click normality plot with test, automatically you assign the SPSS to run an analysis for you using Kolmogorov Munov and also Shapiro Wilk, as well as analysis, uh, the SPSS will produce a plot which is histogram as well as QQ plot for you to find the normality of your data. Right, this would be example of an analysis using Komogorov, Milnov and also Shapiro wheel. Like I said before, when do we use Komogorov, when do we use Shapiro, it depends on the number of your samples. If your sample is more than 50, you should use Komogorov, Milnov. If it is less than 50, you should use Shapiro wheel. So from both either Komogoros Milnov and Shapiro wheel, we are interested in looking at the p-value or the significant value, where what we want is that the p-value should be more than 0 0.05. So why do we want p more than 0 0.05? Because if your p-value is more than 0 0.05, it indicates that your data is normally distributed. Okay, so in this example, the p-value for lecturer is 0 0.200, which is p is more than 0 0.05, then the distribution of this data is normal. 
Whereas for teacher, the value is also 0 0.200, where the p-value is more than 0 0.05, then it indicates that the distribution of this data is also normal. So we want p to be more than 0 0.05. Next, what we want to learn is how to use or how to perform a normality test, but this time we use graph or interpret the graph to find out whether your data is normally distributed or not. So there are three ways of using graph to identify whether your data is normally distributed or not. First one is by using histogram. Second one is to use the Kiki plot. And the third one to use the stem and leaf plot. So histogram, your, uh, uh, whenever you run a histogram, the shape of the, the graph must be normally distributed or you should show a bell-shaped curve. And for the QQ plot, yeah, is a reasonably straight line suggests a normal distribution. You should have a straight line where all the plot, yeah, are near to the line. And as for the stem and leaf plot, it's the same as histogram, must be normally distributed or show, or show a bell-shaped curve. So in order to get the um, normally distributed uh, or, or how to run a normally, normality test, but this time using graph, the same ways as I showed earlier by using numbers. Yeah, You need to go to SPSS, click on Analyze and click on Descriptive Statistic, click on Explore, insert all the variables involved that you want to test, and then don't forget to click Plots, and after that, choose Normality Plot with Test. So automatically, you... SPSS, we run the analysis and the output will show the normality test in numerical form as well as the normality test using the graph. So this is example of histogram. Yeah, example of histogram after you have assigned SPSS to run the analysis for you. And if you want to get the normal curve, you just double click and choose normal curve and the SPSS will show the normal curve in your histogram or on your histogram and this would be example of the qq plot like i said what we want is that the line should be straight where the plot are closely near or close to the straight line of the plot so if the dot or the plot are near the straight line it indicates that your data is normally distributed in this case for both lecturer and teacher we can see that all most of the dots are near the straight line, so it indicates that the data is normally distributed. So that is all for our lecture today on how you can get normality or you can run or checking normality tests either using, using numerical. There are four types of testing, uh, normality tests using numbers, which are using skewness, using ketosis, the Kolmogorov Smirnov test as well as Shapiro Wilk test. And you can also check whether your data is normal or not by using graph, which are using histogram, using Kiki plot, as well as using the stem and leaf plot. So thank you very much for watching this video and enjoy learning statistics. Have a nice day.